Hi there, welcome to War Paint Studio. Today, we're going to talk about a serious problem every wargamer has, and that is their pile of shame. We all know, like me, I've been busy with commissions, and all that's happened is my own personal stuff has stacked up to a point where it's becoming basically uncontrollable. So, today, I've got a solution. Let's go. So, here's just a little bit of my pile of shame. Let's show you what we're working with. So, I've had things such as this. It's upside down, I know. I've got this to do. I've got a few boxes of these. A pile of English Civil War by the looks of things. Put that down. And I've got a box of absolute random stuff. Fantasy, sci-fi, all sorts. It's all in here. So, it needs doing. So, let's get it done. So, this is my solution. So, what is my solution, you may ask? Well, what I've done is, I've taken a little bit from every kind of army or genre of army I've got knocking around and I've placed them into six different boxes one two three don't know what's in there, I can't remember what I put in four I don't know what they are five well if you can't work out that I don't know what you can't work out six, look, half painted figures I wanted to do but never got around to so the theory is is that what I do is take a dice tray from dire wolf wargaming I'll be taking a dice and I'll be having a roll here we go I got me dice normal dice little green kind of thing let's throw it in this here nice little dice tray I'll drop the link in the description if you'd like to get yourself one of these. And let's go. We got a two. So that is. Let's open it up. What do we have here? We have. Paddy miniatures. Tell by the boxes. What are they? get this here it appears to be some Ashigaru with muskets for a samurai army I've had for over 10 years and never actually done anything with right these will be fun Right, so all I've done is I've taken an army painter matte black, undercoated one of the models, and I'm going to show you how to paint it. Start off with, I've taken my necromancer cloak, again from army painter, and I've gave it a nice heavy dry brush. All that does is it brings out the raised edges of the model, and it makes it all look good. Next up, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the old leather brown, I'm going to be just pulling a base coat onto the face, a little ear there, his neck, onto the cloth of the tunic, as that will be a lovely base coat for our yellow, and onto the hands, well, the fingertips, as the rest of the hands pretty much covered. Oh yeah, don't forget the toes and the feet. Some of these samurai are wearing, not samurai, Ashigaru, they're wearing uh, sandals with socks and without socks. Right, now that that's done, 
what we're going to do we're going to move on to our next color again another base coat what this will be is a real nice monster brown and with the monster brown all we're going to do is we're going to go over the woodwork on the musket the piece of cloth at the back of his helmet As you can see that's all nice and neatly done. So we'll move on to our next colour. One little thing on these models, they've got a lovely little detailing on the bottom. A nice little trigger piece underneath. Anyway, next colour. We're going to move on some elven flesh. We're just going to apply that over all the fleshy areas. Again, don't forget the little toes sticking out the sandal or the other little parts of exposed flesh around the feet. That's the flesh done. Now we're going to apply our first uh, tunic colour, which is demonic yellow. Lovely bright yellow, strong pigment. Even with a thin down coat, it goes on beautifully. All we're going to do is apply onto the tunic. We're going to decorate our arm with some yellow uh, raised edges and the little pieces just underneath here on the bottom of the leg. Right there it is. As you can see our model starting to come together already it looks pretty lively. So. To be fair, I could play a game with that right now. Anyway, let's move on to our next colour. And we're going to do our trousers. So we're going to start off with a nice dragon red. This is a great little base coat. And what it's going to do is it's going to help us set it up for our next colour, which is pure red as our beautiful little highlight colour. And look at that model just starts to come to life as soon as you start applying this outstanding So for this little highlighting technique, all you gotta do, paint single layer of the pure red, slightly thin down, not too much, straight over onto the highlights, all the raised areas of the model. Beautiful. Next up, we're using a small mix of skeleton bone and monster brown. 
And this is just for the cloth at the back of the helmet. I don't tend to normally mix my paints too much, as it can lead to a bit of muddiness and lose some of the effectiveness of the paint itself. Again, using the same technique with, as with the trousers, I'm just applying it, leaving small areas of the base colour showing underneath. Right now we're just going to pop the skeleton bone over the uh, belt around the middle. Some of you keen-eyed individuals may have noticed that uh, in the meantime, on his one uh, wrist, on his left wrist, there's a little cord around his wrist. And I have base coated that with Monster Brown. Next up, we're going to be just highlighting our yellow tunic with some moon dust. This is just a very light highlight, applying it just over the raised areas of our man on the tunic. Trying not to cover up too much of that demonic yellow. As you can see, I was starting to have a little bit of issue here, as it turned out that I had a massive hair on the brush. I've just realised it, and oh wait, still there. Try to get rid of it. Hold up. Now it's gone. Problem with having cats. Back to the painting. As I said, just pull it on the raised areas, nice and gentle, not too much. Just to act as a very subtle highlight. Next up, we're going to be just using some fur brown to go over the strapping. So you'll find the strapping around the helmet, underneath the chin, around the ears. And then we're going to be covering the sandals. All the strapping around the sandals in the same colour. Starting to come together now. Whilst we were there, I also did a couple of little bags on the model with the fur brown too. Next up, I got this beautiful little colour I uh, found in a hobby store it's from Deco Art called Country Maple. I wanted a lighter colour for my uh, musket, and uh, I decided that this Country Maple was the one. Now we've just got the medals to do. So just gonna grab our gun metal. Again, all these paints from Army Painter unless I say otherwise. So just gonna go over all the parts of the musket that are gun metal. And then we're going to get some greedy gold and apply it just to the handle of his sword right there. Give him that particularly outstanding look.
Ain't he looking beautiful? Right, so all I've done in between the uh, gold and the wash that I'm applying here is I've touched up over all the black areas because they were looking a bit shabby from like rubbing and things like that, you know, from handling and turning the model. We're just that necromancer cloak again. And now all I'm doing is applying this wash, call it a wash, more of a varnish. It's a Wix's dark oak, watered down with a bit of water, oddly enough and a touch of washing up liquid to act as a bit of a flow aid all it'll do is it'll settle in beautifully into these uh, darker recesses creating some natural shadow but not spoiling the actual original highlights that we've already made you can apply this not quite heavily but it is forgiving and if there are areas that it does look a bit too dark all you do is you just tap it out get the brush to soak it up and take it away there's an area you think that might need a bit more of it chuck a bit more on Now then, all I'll be doing is, once this is dry, I'll be just applying some matte varnish on. Uh, my favourite matte varnish is the Vallejo Matte Acrylic Varnish, as it has a really nice proper matte finish. And what I'll be then doing is leaving it to dry, and we'll take a look at the end result. So there we have it, that's our uh, little samurai painted. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to go do a second video at some point, maybe in a week. It will be in a week, maybe, yeah, it'll be in a week. And then I'll do all the basing, and what we'll do is we'll get the whole unit all nicely based. Gives me a couple of days to think about the, how I'm going to base them, what system I'm going to use, I haven't got a clue, but yeah, let's see what happens. I'll catch you soon. New video will be out at some point. Don't forget to drop a like, share, and subscribe. And Wild Paint Studio, adieu.